In this video we're going to complete example 2. In the last video we learned to multiply the fractions first and simplify afterwards. In this video we're actually going to simplify while we multiply. And we do this by cancelling common factors. So if I was doing question A and I was multiplying the numerators, I would get 3 times 4. And if I multiplied the denominators, I would get 4 times 5. Now if you look at the top and the bottom of the fraction, you will notice some common factors. We have a common factor of 4. Because of that, we can cancel them. You can cancel a number at the top of the fraction as long as you cancel the same number at the bottom of the fraction. This will now give us 3 over 5 as our solution. In fact, when I completed question A, I showed a lot more working than I really needed to. I could have simply cancelled the 4s at the very beginning and gone, oh, that's easy, it's going to be 3 over 5. Moving now on to question B, if I multiply my numerators, I get 8 times 3. And when I multiply my denominators, I get 9 times 3. Four. Now when you look at this, we can't see any common factors. But we can get around that by manipulating our fraction a little bit. If you look at the top of the fraction, we have the number 8. And 8 is made from multiplying 2 by 4. At the bottom of our fraction, we have the number 9. 9 is made by multiplying 3 by 3. Now we have some common factors. I'm going to cancel 1, 3 above and 1, 3 below. I'm also going to cancel 1, 4 above and 1, 4 below. This gives me a solution of 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. Let's now move on to question C. We've got the word of which means to multiply. So for our numerators we get 8 times 5 and for our denominators we get 30 times 12. Once again, we have no common factors, but we can manipulate our fraction a little bit. 8 at the top can be rewritten as 2 times 4. And if we look at the bottom of our fraction, with the 30, I could rewrite that as 5 times 6. And for the 12, I can rewrite that as 4 times 3. Now, just having a close look at this, I reckon I could split it up a little bit more. I could split the 6 up into 2 times 3. So I'll go down another line and I'll redo that. So 2 times 4 times 5 at the top, and 5 times 2 times 3 instead of 6 times 4 times 3. Now I can do some cancelling here. I can cancel out a 2 above and below. I can cancel a 4 above and below. And I can also cancel a 5 above and below. I'm just going to give myself some room here. What's going to go at the bottom of our fraction here? Well, we have 3 times 3. That makes 9. So we'll put that at the bottom. You'll notice that there's nothing at the top of the fraction. There's nothing here, everything's crossed out. And some people make the mistake of writing zero because I think zero represents nothing. And in an earlier topic, I mentioned that when there's nothing at the top of the fraction, you can write times one. That means we're going to have a one at the top of our fraction. We have one ninth. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.